For tape, CDs, DVDs, or our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2018 Thanksgiving Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday morning, November the 24th, 2018. Jerry McGee is the speaker of the morning teaching on Spirit of Stupor. My sister Jerry McGee is going to come deliver the Word of God. Okay, so Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that your word is spirit and life, that you watch over your word to perform it. We thank you that signs and wonders accompany the teaching of your word. We thank you that every time a demon leaves, a sign and a wonder happens. We just ask you to bring your presence into this place. We welcome. thank you that you're already here, Lord. Uh, God, we just give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, I pray that I, my words will be like goats, like well-driven nails given by you, Lord, the shepherd. We pray, Father, your glory will rest upon me and each person who hears this message. Father, we pray you move upon us with your mighty Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, I pray the life of Jesus in me will flow out and touch the lives of every person in this room to heal, to set free, to deliver, to encourage, to comfort whatever is needed in Jesus name we ask you for a special covering of warrior angels over us in this camp over our president those uh, that are president's allies our children to boomerang back on the enemy every curse and assignment sent against us not to kill them hurt them harm them but so they'll fear God and turn away from evil Lord we pray for all those that are hiding nets for our feet that their the nets will catch their own feet while we pass by safely we thank you and praise you Lord we bind Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places from this camp, from each person here. We bind the strong man over every life. We bind every spirit that would keep people from hearing, receiving, understanding, and turning to be healed. In Jesus' name. We break the power of every lying spirit in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that even if I say it wrong, your Holy Spirit will let them hear it right. Give us ears to hear in Jesus' name. I pray you set every person free in the name of Jesus. And I bind you, Satan, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in heavenly places from us. You'll not work with, communicate with, make contact with anyone on this earth or in the heavenly places to work divination against us in Jesus' name. Well, this message is called a spirit of stupor. And we're given over to a spirit of stupor or a spirit of sleep. The New American Standard calls it a spirit of sleep, and the King James calls it a spirit of stupor. It's one and the same thing. It's tied in with gluttony. It's tied in with spiritual nakedness. It's tied in with uh, drunkenness. It's tied in, tied in with uh, gluttony, sluggishness, laziness. Um, and a spirit of sleep or slumber is an evil spirit, and it has many evil spirits that accompany it. And we'll be talking about them. As I name the different, in a minute I'm going to go through the characteristics of a person that has a, a spirit of stupor. And you may have one of these characteristics, you may have half of them, you may have uh, none of them, but I believe that most of us have had this spirit in varying degrees, depending how deeply it's been embedded in us. Not only because of our sin, but because of the generational iniquities of the forefathers. And um, it's also a cause of eye problems, back problems. Um, anyway, it comes in when we don't walk according to the word of God. When we have idols, when we commit spiritual adultery. Um, you know, we, most of us, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I had forefathers. I had three Baptist preachers in my background and so a lot of people that just had a religious spirit i remember my dad's brothers all they all talked about jesus all the time but very few of them lived under the lordship of jesus and so that's like a religious spirit and so romans 11 8 says just as it is written god gave them a spirit of stupor in the greek that means stupefaction 
eyes to see not, ears to hear not, down to this very, um, this very day. So you can see it can be the cause of uh, deafness, physical de deafness, spiritual deafness, um, spiritual blindness, and blindness. Uh, verse 9 says, And David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a retribution to them. Well, I don't know about you, but my food table has been a, has been a snare to me. And that's the gluttony thing. And then it says, Let their eyes be darkened, which means obscure, not clear to the understanding, and um, which has led me to start a word study on darkened, darkness. Because if your eyes are obscure, that means not clear to the understanding. That can be one of the spiritual roots to blindness. It says to give them eyes to see not and bend their backs forever. So it's also a call, one of the causes of back problems. Backsliding is the major cause of back problems. Also, let people stab in you in the back. You stab in others in the back. There's another scripture that says the plowers, like demons with little plows, plowed into my back. There's another one that says, lay down and let the enemy make your back a sidewalk. That's a picture of a person that's passive, that lets people control them, run over them. Those are just a few, turning your back to the Lord and sit in your face. And, um, and here are some warnings from God's Word. Uh, it says in, in Ephesians 5, it says, Awake sleeper and arise from the dead so that Christ might shine upon you. Be not drunk with wine where is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to God. So that's the, that is the fruit of being filled with the Spirit having the joy of the Lord in your life. Ephesians 5.14 says, For this reason, God says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead. I already quoted that. Proverbs 6.7 says, How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from sleep? Romans 13.11 says, And this do, knowing that the time that is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep, for now is the for now, salvation is nearer to us than when we first believed. You know, salvation is a walk. It begins when we receive Jesus as Savior, and we walk it out. And like Randy said, all of us, even the, all the counselors, the speakers here, the ones on the prayer um, team, we get deliverance every time. In fact, you know, you think that you think that you get deliverance, but the more you walk with God, the more deliverance you get. Because at first you don't even really see what you've done wrong. But the closer you get to God, the more you see that you're the one that's in need of prayer. I used to think God did me, I did God a favor when he saved me. <laughs> a little bit prideful. <laughs> now I wonder why he ever saved me. <laughs> After walking with him 56 years, I think. I don't feel that way anymore. <laughs> you can see I had a little pride problem. Like Carla said, humble and proud of it. <laughs> Luke 21:34 says, and we read this yesterday, Be on guard that your hearts may not be weighted down with dissipation, that's excess, and drunkenness, and the worries of this life, and that, and that the day doesn't come on you like a trap. You know, some of you, a spirit of sleep and stupor can come in through our sin. But some of you maybe who've been delivered from drugs and alcohol, there's still something hanging over from, um, from the past. And salvation is a walk that begins when you receive Jesus as Savior. You walk it out. You work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And what that means is that when you go through a trial, you let God use that trial to conform you into his image. Somebody, I guess it was Carla, read Romans 8, says, Everything works together for good to those that love the Lord, to the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he predestined to become uh, conformed into the image of the Christ. So that's the purpose of us working out our salvation with fear and trembling. We go through a trial, and we ask God, Lord, did we, like Randy said last night, I believe it was last night, ask God, did you do something? And if you didn't come against the devil, but anyway... Work out your salvation with fear and trembling is let God teach you what he's trying to teach you through that trial, through repentance, then you get more conformed to the image of Christ. And that's what it means to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Salvation is free gift. 
and we're saved by his grace. But if we're saved, we're going to be walking in obedience. When you're saved, you're not going to be able to stand it until you get it right. <clears throat> if you say you know the Lord, <clears throat> then you can continue in sin. <clears throat> I can I tell you, you just need to get saved. Because when you, when you sin, it's like hot wax. And to me, when, the minute I sin, I mean, I just feel it all over me. I can't, I, I can't live that way. I've got to get it right with God. And the Bible says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Just saying, I, I repent, repent, that's good to say that. But we also need to confess our sins, as God's word says. And so if it's your lifestyle or to live in this condition, then you're on your way to hell because it'll send you to hell. In the fruit of the flesh in Galatians 5.21, it talks about the fruit of the flesh. It talks about envying, drunkenness, and I'm not naming all of them. Envying, drunkenness. You can be drunk on alcohol. You can be drunk on drugs. You can be drunk on food. You can be spiritually drunk because of your spiritual uh, idolatry and because of committing spiritual adultery against the Lord Jesus Christ. He's your bridegroom. And the scripture says harlotry wine and new wine take away the understanding. And so when, when we commit spiritual adultery against the Lord, he, he gives us the cup of the wine of his wrath to make us drink it and we're drunk. And that's what you see in lots of churches today. They call it revival. It's the revival of the unholy spirit. It's a judgment on the spiritual harlot, spiritual adultery. So carousing, envying, carousing, um, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I've been drunk on food. I don't know if you can relate. You can overeat to where you just feel drunk. Praise God, I don't do that anymore. And, here, and so here's some things that can open this up to a spirit of sleep or stupor. Uh, fruitlessness, and we talked about that last night. John 15 says if you don't pr- produce fruit, then you're cut off as a branch and thrown in the fire and burned. And he's the, God is the uh, vine, the true vine, and we're the branches. Every branch in me that does not produce good fruit is cut off. And so... We live a fruitless life. The Bible says, bear fruit and so prove to be my disciple. Do you know that if God cuts you off and you're not be- because you're not bearing fruit, to me the other day the Lord showed me this. This really proves, the sa- this really proves salvation lordship. Because if you don't produce fruit, you get cut off. And, and so if you're getting cut off, then you're not producing fruit. And so that proves that you're not even saved. And if you want to say you were saved, lost, lost, saved, or whatever, but the way you walk proves what you're walking after. So it, Jesus said in John 15, so bear fruit and prove to be my disciple. And so this is what I started to say and forgot. Only disciples get to heaven. Bear fruit and so prove to be my disciple. I saw that just last week. And that's the scripture that proves that only disciples get to heaven. A disciple is somebody that lets God discipline them. It's not a head knowledge of God. It's when God does a work in our heart and we, uh, we're transformed by the power of his might. And I can tell you, we can't be the way we used to be. And you can't explain it. It's not ho-hum God anymore. Uh, also, um, it comes in through the lack of diligence. Proverbs 19.15 says, Laziness cast into a deep sleep, and an idle man will suffer hunger. You know, I was thinking about this the other day when I was going over this message. You know, when you're bored, you want to eat more, or whatever your deal is. I mean, eat more, have more sex, more alcohol, more drugs, whatever, because you're bored. An idle man will suffer hunger. Proverbs 24, verse 33, the first part of that verse says, I passed by the, by the field of a man lacking sense. It was completely overgrown with thistles. In other words, he let his spiritual garden just dr- grow up with weeds. You don't have to protect the, the weeds because they'll overtake the good plants if you don't take care of your garden. Well, your heart's your garden. And the things some of you have gotten delivered from some things that planted things down in your spiritual garden that's been producing negative fruit. And so he says, I passed by the man of a man lacking sense. He, he, his, his garden was completely overgrown with thistles. And it said, a little sleep, a little slumber, not much, but just a little. Um, 
a little folding of the hands to rest, and then it says your poverty will come like a robber, and your your want will come like a robber, and your somebody read that scripture to me. Your poverty will come as one that prevaileth, and by one as an armed man. Okay. Does anybody have New American Standard Version? Randy, what do you have? King J? You don't have your Bible? I don't bring a Bible anymore because I'm having to read from a computer. I have a difficulty with paper notes. I started trying to do it, but Lord showed me an easier way to do it with my iPad. So praise God. I'm in the Word again, but it's through the iPad. But I miss the paper Bible. And so a little sleep, not much, just a little, a little slumber, a little folding the hands of the rest, and your poverty come, will come like a robber and your want like an armed man. I might have said that backwards, but anyway. Anyway, so we've got to take care of our spiritual garden. We have to be careful of what we're planting in our garden. If you're sitting before a TV all day, the words are seed and wor- words are seed and the Word of God is seed, and you're planting things wrong things, looking at pornography, looking at things, reading things, being involved in things you should, you're planting stuff in your, in your spiritual garden. And in Jeremiah 1, Carla read this scripture, pull down, uproot, and it says, God says, pull down, uproot, and pluck out everything that doesn't belong. And it's a process, getting that garden weeded up. And so if we don't do that, then we're not, we're not getting conformed to the image of Christ. We're getting defiled. Another is just giving God lip service. Just pretending that you love Jesus and there's no fruit in your life. Isaiah 29 verse 9 says, Be delayed and wait. Blind yourself and be blind. This is another route to eye problems. They became drunk but not with wine. They staggered but not with strong drink. In other words, they didn't have any alcohol. You see this in these fake revivals where people are so drunk they can't even stand up. Are they, and they've never had a drop of alcohol. So this really addresses a lot of places that are calling things revival that are the revival but not the revival of the Holy Spirit. In fact, even the music doesn't honor God. There's so much rock and rap music in it that you can't even hear the melody. That's not ushering in the Holy Spirit. That's ushering in the beast. It says, blind yourself and be blind. They became drunk but not with wine. They staggered not, but not with strong drink. And I shared last night that I've been in one place where the man, in fact, I've seen these on YouTube. They were so drunk they could not even stand up. They go, whoa, they catch their self. Isaiah 29, 10 says, For the Lord has poured over you a spirit of of deep sleep. Now, you know, we want to blame the devil for a lot of things that God does. This is carried out by demon powers. But it's kind of like if God is your refuge and you picture God's refuge like a big umbrella. And you step outside of God's refuge out into Satan's territory. Guess what? You become captive of Satan. Satan's the one that does it. But God is the one that drops the hedge and says, hedge down, sick them. God lets them be turned over to it. It says that God has poured out over you a spirit of deep sleep. He has shut your ears, the eyes, the prophets, and he has covered your head, the seers. The entire vision of this Bible will be, give, will be to you like the, like the words of a sealed book. As Randy was mentioning, you, you can't understand the words of this Bible are, will be to you like the words of a sealed book. When they give it to the one who's literate, that's the one who has his book learning, he'll say, please read this, and he'll say, I can't read it, for it's sealed. And then you give it the book to the one who is illiterate, the one who does not have any book learning, and say, please read this, and he'll say, I can't read it. Then the Lord said, because this people draw near with their words, and they honor and their honor of me consists they honor me with lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their reverence for me um, consists of tradition learned by rote. Therefore, behold, I will once again deal marvelously with this people, wondrously marvelous, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the discernment of their discerning men will be 
concealed. So you see why there's, lack, there's a lack of discernment in the church today. Randy was talking about discernment goes with understanding, it goes with wisdom, discretion, prudence. Those are all words that go together. Well, sleep, stupor, drunk, drunken, nakedness are just a few of the words. Sluggishness, sluggard, lazy are just words that go with a person that is not walking in understanding and not walking in wisdom. God gives us over to this spirit. And he just drops the hedge when I say give it over. I mean, the de- in other words, God lets down the hedge. And the, in the, my friend Milton Green, he used to say, he'd read the Bible, he'd say, hedge down Sikkim. And that's what it is. When you get out from under God's refuge, guess what? You're out in Satan's territory. So that's why it's important to walk in the spirit, to walk the highway of holiness, to... Um, to walk in wisdom because when you walk in wisdom according to Job 28 no bird of prey can even know that path the devil and his demons do not know the path of the highway of holiness and so that's why it's very important for us to stay submitted to God it's not a one time submission when you give your heart to Jesus it's a moment by moment surrendering your life to the Lord denying yourself Walking in the Spirit means that I choose death to myself so that the resurrected life of the Lord Jesus can come through me, through letting Him control my life. Uh, Another way it comes in is through taking the Lord's Supper with sin in your life. 1 Corinthians 11.30 says, For this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep. And that means when you... When you're in church and they do the Lord's Supper, make sure that you're confessed up and prayed up when you take the Lord's Supper because that can make you weak, sick, or even die. Another spiritual adultery, in fact, all of it is spiritual adultery. Any sin, um, any iniquity that is, is idolatry. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and all iniquity is as idolatry. So, if I'm, if I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus and my heart is loving something more, more than I love Jesus, I'm committing spiritual adultery. I'm, I'm a spiritual harlot. The scripture says in Numbers 5 that the harlot um, will be bitter. In fact, the word of God says the heart, harlot is bitter. You will either get better or bitter by what we go through. How we respond in our trials will determine if we're going to get better or bitter. Bitterness will kill you. Jeremiah 51:39 says, "When they become heated up, I shall serve them a banquet and make them drunk." So God says, "I'm going to make them drunk, that they may become jubilant and may sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake up," declares the Lord. So you see this in these fake revivals. Verse 51, verse Jeremiah 51:57, "And I shall make her princes and her wise men drunk." her governors, her prefects, and her mighty men, that they may sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake up, declares the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. And God says, I'm going to do it. And, of course, the demons carry it out. Proverbs, I'm sorry, Psalm 60, verse 3 says, Thou hast made thy people experience hardship. Thou hast given us a wine to drink that makes us stagger. You see, sometimes you see people... um, have a staggering gait. It could be because they weren't walking paths of righteousness. Or they've got a spirit of drunkenness on them. Revelation 14.10 says, He also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the, of the Lamb. Revelation 17.20 with whom the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality. You know, so many of our politicians claim to be believers, and they are believers in their head, but that's not been fruit. And I'm not saying all of them. Thank God there are some that are very, very uh, godly. One I'm thinking about is Jim Jordan. He's for real. He's a real deal. And you can tell I heard him uh, on an interview and how he put God first. And I've seen the fruit of that in how he responds even in the Congress. 
It says, whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality. And the King James says fornication. And those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. Another way it comes in is through gluttony, through drunkenness, through, um, and they're all interrelated. Ecclesiastes 10:17 says, Blessed are you, O land, whose king is of nobility, and in whose princes, and of course we kings and priests, um, eat at the appropriate time for strength and not for drunkenness. So most of my life I've eaten for drunkenness and not for strength. Proverbs 23, 21 says, For the heavy drinker and the glutton will come to poverty, and drunkenness will clothe a man with rags. So we have spiritual clothes. Uh, the Bible says that we're clothed, if we're believers, we're clothed with robes of righteousness. But if we're, if we're committing spiritual adultery against the Lord, we lose our clothes. And, it, and we get clothed instead of with robes of righteousness, we get clothed with rags. In fact, if we're spiritually naked before the Lord, we might be all sitting here with clothes on, but in the spirit realm, we're sitting there here buck naked in the spirit realm because we don't have God's covering over us. And some of the symptoms in varying degrees, and be thinking about these, you don't have to have them all. You can have them all, have a few of them. Of course, the more of them that you have, the more bondage you have, but praise God, we're going to get free from this stuff today. In Jesus' name. So there's a lot of symptoms, and I just basically took these words and looked them up in the dictionary, the different definitions. The symptoms in varying degrees, depending on how deeply these things are embedded. Stupor, which is stupefaction, which is a physical state in which responses to stimuli are suspended. So be repenting as I name these things. A King James says slumber, which is a prickling sensation of the limbs. Um, lethargy um, you know you can sleep wrong on your arm and your arm can go to sleep it's not talking about that it's talking about just like if you're just here today and your arms are kind of feeling like they're going to sleep or your legs feel like they're going to sleep that's the symptom drowsiness and sleepiness slumbering spirit is a state of inactivity or dormancy means to fall asleep one thing that um, one, um, I guess it's a disease, that narcolepsy is when a person is just having a day and they just go to sleep. Prickling sensation as if the limb's going to sleep. Lack of energy. You know, how many of us can function? I used to couldn't function without caffeine. And how many of us are dependent on caffeine to function? And I mean, I've done it myself. I was the biggest caffeine addict. You don't take caffeine away from me, but God did. <laughs> he let me get sick for a week, and I didn't need caffeine. I slept 24-7. Never even had a headache, which is a miracle. That was a God thing. Somebody said, well, you know, the devil did a number on you. I said, no, this was a God thing. This was the deliverance. Anyway, <laughs> praise God. And, you know, I, I had gotten off of caffeine, got on it several times, had that bondage broken, got right back on it one cup. And sometimes I think, I'd like just to have a cup. And they're like, no, no, it's too hard to break, too hard to get off. So how many of us, because of lack of energy, and I'm not condemning anybody, and I'm not trying to take away your coffee, okay, or your caffeine, but a lack of energy... How would you feel if you didn't have any caffeine? Are you trusted? Is it, is it by your might or by your power or by the spirit of caffeine? Or is it by the spirit of the Lord giving you energy? I was convicted because it was like the Lord was saying, Jerry, it's not by your might or your power or by the power of caffeine. It's by my spirit that cares the Lord. And I was thinking, I was functioning on his caffeine. Anyway, that's the end of that sermon. <laughs> you say, okay, quit meddling. Okay. <laughs> and I like coffee too, Carla. <laughs> I love caffeine. <laughs> but you know, being addicted to diet pills, when you get rid of the diet pills that give you energy, which is speed, then you grab the caffeine. And of course, Carla wasn't on speed, but I guess the diet pills I was on, now I'm finding out they were speed. Indolence. Habitual laziness, sloth, um, the quality or the state of being lazy or idleness, slothfulness is, is a person that has an aversion to work, um, indolence, disinclined to work or exert himself or herself, 
sluggishness and inactivity. And be repenting if you hear this. Drowsiness and sleepiness, I already said that. Torpid suggests the, the suspension of activity, characteristic of an animal in hibernation. Decrease in physical alertness and mental activity. Mental numbness, mind is deprived of the power to feel or move normally. Um, eyes that see not, ears that hear not, physical and spiritual blindness, physical and spiritual um, deafness. Jesus said over and over in the word of God to him who has ears, let him hear. And I'm telling you, people don't have ears to hear. In my little uh, kennel business, uh, people want directions to my house. And I'll say, now, when you get to a certain exit, you stop there and call me. And don't move any further or you get lost. They go right by. They don't listen to a word you say. <clears throat> when I used to have my farm and I had people that came out of drugs and all kinds of things, prostitution, drugs, people that had been satanically ritually abused. I would send them to the feed store because we had cows. Just before Y2K, we had cows and chickens and pigs and all kinds of stuff. And I tell you, I, when I got rid of those pigs, Gladys and Wilbur, <laughs> that just multiplied uh, 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 tremendously. When I got rid of them, I had to I had to pay the people to take the I had to pay for the gas to take the for the pigs, and then I had to pay them to take the pigs. <laughs> so ears that hear not and so Lord we put your hands over your ears Lord give me ears to hear unplug, excavate irrigate and dig out my ears and every demon that has blocked my hearing and forgive me for not listening to my daddy and mother and tuning them out which has been a major cause of hearing problems in Jesus name I just repent in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, unplug their ears. Give them ears to hear in Jesus' name. It can be one of the roots to bad problems. I've already said people who have this spirit are not good listeners. You know what? People that aren't good listeners sometimes, what they do is they hijack you with words. Uh, there is a precious man that, you, that did go to our church. He would corner you and he would... He didn't come up from air. So if you've been that kind of person, because it causes people to run from you. Because nobody wants to be high. That's what David said, my grandson, that they, he hijacks you. <laughs> so don't be a person that hijacks people with words. Ask God to give you uh, ears to hear, to be a good listener. In fact, if, you're, if you minister deliverance and you minister to people, you have to listen to what they say. And if you never listen to your daddy or your mother, you have a problem listening. And if you have this spirit of stupor, you have a problem listening. You know, sometimes people want to talk because they just want to let you know they're around or it's a detention-getting thing or it's because coming out of rejection. But it's really idolatry. And God says where there's many words, transgression is unavoidable. And one of these days, I'm going to do a message on wasted, worthless words. Don't be don't be the kind of person that your words don't fall to the ground. Let them be like arrows from the Lord. I used to I used to talk so much that I'd go out to lunch for somebody. This was years ago, 30, 40 years ago. And I'd talk so much I'd come home feeling so convicted because I talked too much. And thank God I don't talk as much now as I used to, but I did. Okay. And they, a person that has a spirit of stupor can seem dazed and in a stunned condition. It's kind of like, um, um, have you ever seen a bird fly into a plate glass window? Have you? You know, in the spring, red birds, if, if they can see their, a male red bird, if he can see his reflection in your, in your plate glass, he'll keep hitting it till he kills himself. And so, dazed. I used to have a bird that would hit a red bird every spring, or not every spring, but one particular spring. <laughs> this red bird would keep hitting my window, and I bound, I bound every demon, I bound Satan, and he kept going splat, splat, splat. <laughs> Finally, I got my shotgun and I went outside and I blew him away, and red bird feathers were just <laughs> like this. <laughs> but you see, they hit the window so much that they 
They've got themselves dazed and stunned. So a person that has got a, a spirit of stupor is like a bird that flew into a plate glass window. A stupor means to lose one's bearings in a state of bewilderment, to be confused, um, lose one's bearings, or to be disconnected. And of course, in deliverance, God wants to discon- reconnect us that everything that got disconnected. Perplexed and puzzled, distracted, to cause to turn away from the original, focus of attention or interest to be diverted, to pull in conflicting emotional directions. Now we see this, I see this a lot when I'm, we're praying for people and those who are in the prayer team can confirm this is sometimes people have a hard time telling you the problem. They'll tell you something and they'll tell you so many things and they can't focus on one thing. Now there's there's a person in here that I remember when they start, started coming about four or five years ago, they were like that. And I noticed today when I prayed for them, they weren't like that anymore. So if that's you, you know who you are. To be disconnected and disorganized. Apathy. Feeling or showing a lack of interest or concern, indifferent, lacking emotion or unresponsive. Coma, a state of deep, often prolonged unconsciousness, usually the result of injury or um, poisoning or accidents or disease. Muscular rigidity, how many, and you may be this person, You might be a person, and when people hug you, you're stiff as a board. You ever hug somebody and they're just stiff? They don't know how to hug. That's usually because they weren't hugged growing up. Love don't. Anyway, I've I've seen some people in here that when I would hug them four or five years ago, they were stiff as a board, and now they're hugging me a little bit. You know, keep coming to Lake Hamilton, because every time you come, you're going to go home different. I mean, I've gotten tremendous deliverance today. Just the prayer team prayed for me. And uh, the Bible says, confess your faults to one another that you might be healed. There's a healing in that to humble yourself. And uh, so I'm thankful for the deliverance I get. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm getting delivered from. But when I go home, and I've been coming since 1997, and I don't think I've missed maybe two, two camps maybe or three camps since 1997, And every time I go home, I'm different. I don't even know what I got delivered from. But there's an improvement in my life. And so I encourage you to keep coming if you can. Another is physical and psychological disorders. (coughs) Epilepsy. Schizophrenia. A sleep-like condition. um, Heightened heightened suggestibility. This person would be easy to, to hypnotize. Hallucinations, which is false and distorted uh, perception of objects or events with a compelling sense of reality. A fake or mistaken idea, a delusion. Mental disorders, that includes dementia. Last night we talked about Alzheimer's. One of the roots of that is in uh, Romans One, exchanging the truth of God for a lie and worshiping the creature rather than the creator. God gives you over to a reprobate mind or dementia or Alzheimer's. Mental disorders. Delusions. A false belief or opinion. A false belief strongly held uh, in spite of invalidating evidence. It's a symptom of mental illness. I know people that think there's people in their attic and they're not, uh, there's nobody in their attic. They're demons, but they believe this lie. Visions of grandeur, which is having a fantastic, um, impractical, impractical plan or desire. Daydreaming, a dream like musing or fantasy while awake, especially of the fulfillment of wishes or hopes. Fantasizing, the creative imagination, unrestrained fantasy, imaginations of power of the mind to form images, especially of what is not present to the senses. Flight of fantasy, 
the mental faculty through which whims, visions, and fantasies are summoned up, imagination, make-believe, play-acting. You know, it's not good, I don't think, to let kids get too, I mean, they're going to play-act a little bit, but don't let that get out of control because it can open children up. And I'm not talking about, you know, playing dolls or doing that, but I'm talking about something that seems kind of abnormal. Unable to comprehend, understand, retain. It means to be deprived of perception or insight. Pretense, the act of pretending, a a false appearance or action intended to deceive. Something imagined or pretended. Disguise, camouflage, cover up, putting on a false front. Ostentation, trying to impress others, boastful showingness. Seeing things that are not there. Having a strong held false belief, fake false notion, error, fake or mistaken ideas. Illusion, erroneous perception of reality, detachment from one's physical surroundings, lacking awareness or the capacity or for sensory perception, emotionally unresponsive, numbness, we've already talked about that, uh, lacking in sensitivity to the feelings and the circumstances of others, not having any pity, unfeeling, having no physical feeling or sensation, passionless, passionless, lacking a strong emotion or feeling, not romantic, not sentimental, apathetic, um, feeling or showing a lack of interest or concern, indifferent, lacking in enthusiasm and, and excitement, even-handed, due to having um, sometimes just not caring one way or the other. Expressionless, devoid of emotion, blank mind, appearing or seeming to, seeming to appear dazed or confused, devoid of thought or expression, not able to recognize or draw fine distinctions, not receptive, you don't get it. Unable to be to be analytical, lacking in effervescence or sparkle, lacking in flavor, unable, incapable of physical uh, sensation. I used to know a girl, and I'm not making fun of her, but she was just stone faced. She was so it's in such a stupor that she just her face. There was never any expression in her face, and that came in through a lot of trauma. Motionless, having or making no motion, firmly in position, detached, distant, alienated, isolated, reserved, unsociable, not disposed to seek the company of others, withdrawn, emotionally unresponsive and detached, introverted, cut off, multiple personalities, That's when a person has, now they call it in psychology, disassociative identity disorder. It's just demons, but different personalities. Uh, When a personality switches from one personality to the other, it's like switching channels on a TV. They don't remember what they did on channel two when they're on channel three. It's really demonic. Emotionally uncommitted, disconnected. We've already said that. Aloof, distant physically or emotionally. Reserved and remote, at a distance, lacking personality, passive, receiving or subjected to an action without responding or initiating an action in return, um, accepting or submitting without objection or resistance, compliant, not participating, acting, or operating, and let me say I see this a lot. Have it, it's also an Ahab spirit. You see this in marriages where one 
one mate controls the other and the other is real passive and unresponsive. A good example, TV example, would be all in the family. Archie Bunker was a male, uh, a male Jezebel, and, and Edith was a Ahab. So it doesn't have to be a man or woman. Usually, women it's women, but I, I, it's a sad thing, and I know it grieves God's heart to see women control men. I guess it grieves my heart because I used to probably be guilty of that myself. You know, sometimes things that grieve your heart, God's trying to show you you did the same thing. Now, we don't have to be controlled by the demons in men and women. We're supposed to be controlled by the Lord. But husbands, rise up and be the spiritual leader of your home. I don't know what it is about women, and this is my advice at my age. I don't know what it is about women, but they'll do whatever they can to get their way, and then they hate your guts. So men, stand up and don't be an Ahab. Be a spiritual leader and don't, I mean, love your wife like Christ loves the church. Lay down your life for her, but don't let her control you. Unsympathetic, hardened, make your heart hard, hard hearted, lack of compassion and pity, incapable of being penetrated or affected. In other words, nothing can get, you've got so so many walls around your heart that, that nobody can get to you. Incapable of physical sensation, lifeless unresponsive, unaware of the feelings and needs of others, cold-hearted and devoid of sympathy or feeling, cold and devoid of sexual desire, uh, you know, we call it frigidity in a marriage, unmindful, exhibiting no feeling or warmth, stone-faced, and I've already shared that, stony-hearted, unreceptive, Unreceptive, callous, stagnant. A stagnant, you've seen a little creek where the water's running, but there'll be one little cove where the water goes and it doesn't go out and it turns green. Stagnant. In Zephaniah, it talks about God punishing those of us who have a stagnant spirit because we worship, we say we worship God, but we really worship Baal. Shows little or any sign of change or activity or advancement lacking vitality, indifferent to or unaffected by joy, grief, pleasure, pain, intellectually weak or obtruse, which is stupid, lacking responsiveness or alertness, insensitive, preoccupied, absorbed in thought, engrossed, excessively concerned with something distracted, lacking knowledge or awareness, not paying attention, unobservant, and can have things right under your nose and you don't see it. I used to have a guy that lived at the farm. He could have something right in his face and he didn't get it. He didn't see it. Oblivious, forgetful, fatigue. Some of these are repetition, but it's so long, it's hard for me to sort it all out with my eyes. Confusion, making a, um, to make gloomy or troubled. You feel like there's a fog or mist or haze over your life. Dimness, lacking brightness. Weakness, paralysis. Benumbed. And that's just some of the symptoms of it. And the condition can cause a person to lose their spiritual clothes. Lamentations 4.21 says, Rejoice. And be glad, O daughter of Edom, who dwells in the land of us. But the, the cup will come around to you as well. You will become drunk and make yourself naked. Ephesians 16:39. And speaking of the harlot, it starts out, if you read before 30, verse 39, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. And then it says, you're not like a normal prostitute. And I'm paraphrasing. A normal prostitute gets paid for what she does, but a spiritual harlot or a spiritual prostitute pays her lovers. You know, if you, if you made somebody an idol in your life, you're just, what you're doing is 
You do everything to try to please them, to make them love you. You're jumping through their hoops. You're doing this. You're baking them cakes. You're babysitting. You're whatever. You just can name all the things because you want them to love you. And I can tell you they'll turn on you every time because God says you'll have no other gods before me. But he says, oh, harlot, oh, hear the word of the Lord. You're not like a normal prostitute. Normal prostitutes get paid for what they do, but you pay your lovers, it says. And then it goes on to say, I will... I will, also, I will also give you into the hands of your lovers, and they'll tear down your shrines, demolish your high places, strip you of your clothing, and take away your jewels, the things that God gives you. And I'll, it will leave you naked and bare. Ezekiel 23:29 says, And they will deal with you in hatred and all of your... And take all your property and leave you naked and bare. And the nakedness of your harlotries shall be uncovered, both you, your lewdness, and your harlotries. Amos 2.16 Even the bravest among your warriors will flee naked in that day, in the day of the Lord. And it's talking about naked without spiritual clothes. Revelation 3.17 Because you say I'm rich... And I become wealthy and have no need of nothing. And that word in the Greek means because you say I'm absolutely abounding in Christian virtue and character. It says because you say that, you have no need of nothing and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And this is another uh, eye prob- eye, uh, ground for eye problems. And it says... Um, and I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire. And I believe it's repentance. I don't know exactly what that means. But it says, I advise for you to buy from me gold refined by fire and white raiment to cover yourself. <coughs> Revelation 16:15 says, Behold, I'm coming like a thief, God says. Now, Jesus said, and he's, Jesus isn't a thief. It's when he's going to have the hedge down and the demons are going to be loosed. He said, I'm coming like a thief, and it's going to come over this whole earth. Behold, the one who stays awake and keeps his garments, lest he walk about naked, and men see his shame. Now, in Matthew 22, verse 1, Jesus is talking about the, the Lord's Supper of the Lamb. There's going to be a time that he has a supper, and he's going to invite us to that supper. It's the marriage supper of the Lamb. It says, And Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who had a wedding feast for his son. And he sent out slaves to call those who had been invited into the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. It says in Luke, I think it's Luke 14 or 13, it says, Some said, I can't come because I married a wife. Others said, I can't come because I have a farm. And in verse 24 it says, And again, the servant... He sent out other slaves, saying, telling those who had been invited, Behold, I'm preparing my dinner. My oxen and my fatted livestock are all butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they did not pay attention, and they went their way. They were too busy. One to his own farm and another to his business. In other words, a person never spent time with the Lord, never had a fellowship with the Lord. And and let me encourage you, you need to be in the Word. You need to spend time with God every morning and any any other time. I pray all day long. I pray in the morning, but all day long I'm talking to God. I live by myself, and it's very peaceful, I will say. (laughs) It says, And the rest seized their slaves and mistreated them and killed them. But the king was enraged, and that's a picture of Jesus, And he sent his armies out to destroy the murderers and set their city afire. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the highways and byways. As you find them, invite them to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out from the streets and gathered together, and they found both evil and good, and the wedding feast was filled with dinner guests. But when the king, Jesus, came in to look at, over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. 
In other words, he was spiritually naked. And he, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king, then the king said to his servants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's some teachings that go around that says outer darkness is not hell. It's hell. Matthew 22:14 says, "For many are cho- many are called, but few are chosen." And I believe the few chosen are the disciples. Jesus rebukes those who did. He rebukes us for not clothing people's nakedness. And you know when we lead people in repentance and we bring them to the, into deliverance, and it's a process. But what happens every time we do that? We're clothing those that are naked. Those are their spiritual naked. Matthew 25, 36 talks about the wise and the foolish. It says, you know, the wise sit on God's right and the, le- the foolish sit, the, I'm sorry, the, wi- the sheep sit on the right and the goat sh- sit on the left. And we see this in politics. Those that are left wing, they're satanic. <coughs> It says, you saw me naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And you can apply a physical prison or a spiritual prison. And David prayed in Psalms 13, verse 3. Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. And so, Lord, we ask you to enlighten our eyes, lest we sleep the sleep of death. So if you'll stand up and ask the Lord, where have you been into spiritual harlotry? Where have you loved something more than you love Jesus? Where have you given God lip service? Pretender. Have you taken the Lord's Supper with sin in your life? Have you been a glutton? A drunkard? Alcohol, drugs? Lord, search my heart. And test my thoughts. Lord, I ask you to let me know the truth that sets me free. You know, you can be a glutton for sex. You can be a glutton for lots of things, not just food. It's excess. Lord, I ask you, pray with me. Lord, I ask you to let me know the truth that sets me free. I expose to you my conscience. Forgive me for fear of remembering. I give you permission to come deep down into my conscience, deep down in my heart, and unlock my memory. Show me any trauma in my life that would cause me to run into a false refuge of drugs, alcohol, sex, or whatever else I've run into. And I ask, Lord, for the truth that sets me free. And if you'll, whenever you get through repenting, just sit down, and then we'll do, uh, I'll pray for y'all. Is everybody back there? I can't see. Everybody's down. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me for idolatry. Forgive me for being a fruitless Christian and not being a disciple that allows you to discipline me, which would cause you to give me over to a spirit of stupor, a spirit of sleep, blindness, deafness, ears that hear not, eyes that see not. God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me that my food table has been a snare. Forgive me for eating at the table of demons, which would cause me to stumble. God, forgive me in Jesus' name, which would cause you to a fruitlessness that would cause you to bend my back forever. And my eyes be darkened, obscure, without understanding. Eyes that see not. And that you'd have been my back forever. Lord, I repent. Forgive me for turning back, turning my back on you, laying down and letting the enemy make my back a sidewalk. Forgive me, Lord, for um, backbiting, stabbing people in the back, letting people stab me in the back. Forgive me for idolatry, which would cause the plowers to plow into my back. Forgive me for backsliding. Forgive me for coming to camps and getting delivered and then going back into my sin. Lord, that's backsliding. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, forgive me. I, I say over these every person here, awake sleeper, arise from the dead. Wake up sleeper, arise from the dead, that Christ might shine upon you. Forgive me, Lord, for being drunk with wine, which is excess, drunk on sex, drunk on alcohol, drunk on drugs, drunk on um, gluttony, uh, drunk on alcohol, which would cause and not to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me for not speaking to others in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing in my heart, making melody to you. Forgive me for not being on guard and allowing my heart to be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life so that the day of the Lord would come on me like a trap. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for a lifestyle of drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. Forgive me for witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me for the sin of idolatry and harlotry that would cause me to lose my clothes, my spiritual clothes, and you to give me over to a spirit of sleep. Forgive me for um, giving you lip service. Forgive me for lack of diligence. Forgive me for laziness. Be repenting. Forgive me for not taking care of my spiritual garden. Forgive me for just giving you lip service. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, forgive me for being too busy for you, not spending time with you, not being in your word. Forgive me that you've not been first in my life. Lord, I repent. Forgive me for committing spiritual adultery against you, Jesus, my bridegroom. Forgive me for idolatry in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I forgive all my forefathers for everything that I've confessed. I ask you to start with Adam and Eve and let your cleansing blood flow down through my bloodline, washing away any ground Satan's had in my life because of the spirit of stupor, sleep, drunkenness, gluttony, nakedness, uh, sluggishness, uh, not taking care of my spiritual garden, not watching over my heart with all diligence. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to break generational curses, soul tie curses, cultural curses, of stupor, of sleep, of gluttony, of overeating, of, ne- ne- of uh, sluggishness, sluz- laziness, uh, spiritual uh, harlotry, idolatry, taking the Lord's Supper with sin in my life, fruitlessness, not being a disciple, not letting you discipline me in the name of Jesus. Uh, I break generational curses, soul tie curses, cultural curses that's come on me through the sins of my forefathers. I break generational curses. I break soul ties. I forgive my forefathers I, for all these things that I've confessed. Forgive me for my sin of what I've confessed. I break soul ties with all my forefathers. I call back my soul and spirit from them. I send back their souls and spirits to them. I exchange their image for the image of Christ. In Jesus' name, I command every demonic spirit to leave now. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of stupor to leave. In the name of Jesus, I command spirits of drunkenness, spirits that came in through taking the Lord's Supper, is sin in their life. Spirits of sickness, um, sleep, death has to go in Jesus' name. Spirits of spiritual adultery, spiritual harlotry, you have to leave in the name of Jesus. Go, go, go out, take a deep breath, come out in Jesus' name. I break the power of lethargy in the name of Jesus. I break the power of stupefaction. I break the power of stupor. I break the power of sleep in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I break down, I tear down strongholds of of sexual immorality. Immorality. I tear down strongholds of gluttony and drunkenness in Jesus' name. We break down, thank you, Lord, the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but mighty to God for the smashing down of strongholds. We smash these strongholds down in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we tear down strongholds of slumber, drowsiness, sleepiness, uh, numbness. We command you to go in Jesus' name. Slumbering spirits, prickliness, uh, limbs and arms going to sleep, lethargy. All spirits that have have drained our energy, indolence, uh, slothfulness in the name of Jesus, you have to go. All spirits of sluggishness and inactivity. In Jesus' name, drowsiness, you have to go in the name of Jesus. All spirits that hinder their alertness and their mental activity, spirits of passivity and apathy, 
<laughs> mental numbness go now in Jesus' name. Blindness, physical blindness, spiritual blindness, physical deafness, physical, spiritual deafness. All spirits that have stopped up their ears uh, in Jesus' name. We just command you to go now in Jesus' name. We break your power in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we command all spirits of stupor to go in Jesus' name. Back problems in Jesus' name. The plowers have to get off their backs in Jesus' name. The scales have to come off their eyes in the name of Jesus. All spirits that would cause them to be dazed and distracted in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Blow out all spirits that hinder them from focusing their attention. Uh, Lord, I gather them from all the places where they've been scattered. All spirits of disconnecting, I reconnect them now. All spirits of, of lack of compassion, lack of pity. All spirits of apathy have to go. Coma spirits have to leave now. In Jesus' name, we break your power. Come out now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we break your power. In Jesus' name, all spirits of muscular rigidity, come out now. Physical and psychological disorders, mental illness, dementia. Lord, forgive me for exchanging the truth of God for a lie and worshiping the creature rather than the creator, uh, which would cause you to give me a reprobate mind. All spirits of dementia, Alzheimer's, go now. Depraved mind, go. Beast mind, epilepsy, leave. Schizophrenia, go now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallucinations has to go. Visions of grandeur has to go. In Jesus' name, all spirits of error, mental disorders, delusions, come out now in Jesus' name. We break your power. In the name of Jesus, take a deep breath, blow out in Jesus' name. All spirits of fantasy, masquerade, masks, disguises. Go down. Visions of grandeur. In Jesus' name, go. Daydreaming. You have to leave. In Jesus' name. Fantasizing. You have to go. Imaginations. You have to leave. Now. I tear down, I cast down every imagination, every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. Fight a fancy, fancy, come out now. Make believe, play acting, come out now in Jesus' name. Pretending, unable to comprehend, understand, and retain, you have to go. Pretense, you have to leave. Out in Jesus' name. All spirits in their imagination, all spirits of visualization, come out. Disguise, camouflage, cover up. Come out now in Jesus' name. Ostentation, come out in Jesus' name. We break your power. Spirits that would cause them to see things that are not there. Get out now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, move upon your children. I ask you, God, move upon every person with your mighty Holy Spirit. Let your glory be upon each person, Lord. That the life of Jesus in, in each life pour out to the other to set free. Strongly held uh, false beliefs come out, false notions, spirits that cause them to be dazed, spirits of mistaken ideas, illusions come out, detachment, I break your power, lacking awareness or the capacity to uh, have sensory perception, emotionally unresponsive, numbness, go now in Jesus' name. We break your power. Out in Jesus' name. All spirits that would cause them to lack sensitivity, unfeeling, uh, spirits of frigidity, passionless, come out in Jesus' name. All spirits that, uh, uh, that keep them from being sentimental when they need to be or romantic when they do need to be. Apathetic, you have to go in the name of Jesus. Lacking in uh, enthusiasm, spirits that have dulled their enthusiasm. All spirits in the name of Jesus of... Uh, sorcery, witchcraft, magic, you have to go in the name of Jesus, motionless, devoid of emotion, blank mind, you have to go, in Jesus' name, I break the power of spirits that daze them, cause them to be dazed, dim, dark, the mist over them, I, I take the mist off their life, I take the dimness off, I take the false covering off in the name of Jesus, I take the darkness off, every spirit that's darkened their eyes, in the name of Jesus, all spirits that keep them from sympathizing and having compassion, uh, inability to cry, spirits of that would cause them to lack perception, the spirits that hinder their understanding, comprehension, and retention of the Word of God, spirits of stupidity has to go, spirits that cause them to lack effervescence, stony face, lacking flavor has to go. Uh, all spirits that make them incapable of 
of receiving physical sensation. I break the power of motionless spirits of indifference. You have to go. Stoicism, passivity, apathy, detached. I command you to go. And Lord, I reattach them in the name of Jesus to you. All spirits of distance that cause them to distance their self or alienate their self or isolate their self, go. Shyness, timidity, you have to go in Jesus' name. Spirits that cause them to be reserved, unsociable, uh, withdrawn in the name of Jesus. Attention getting while I'm at it. Cut off. And I don't think that fits with this spirit, but I see this here at this camp. There's been a lot of attention getting. Let me just tell you something. I'm going to stop right here. Do you know what? God watches you all the time. He's the one that needs you need to get attention from, not people. Because if you're an attention getter, can I te- tell you people avoid you like the plague? You wonder why you don't have friends or why nobody wants to be around you. That's one reason. And there's reasons why people don't want to be around me, too. <laughs> I've got family members that I might rail on their parade. Cut off in Jesus' name. Come out now in Jesus' name. Multiple personalities, I command you to get to link hands and come out in one swoop. Every one of you. Every fake demonic personality, you come out. All spirits that cause them to be emotionally uncommitted, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of aloofness, come out. All spirits that hinder their personality, Lord, I'll loose on them your personality. A passivity, apathy, lethargy has to go. Depression has to go. Unsympathetic, hardness of heart, stony heart, stony face. In Jesus' name, all spirits that keep them from being penetrated and affected, Lord, I take down all the walls that I put up. Pray that. Lord, incapable. Lord, in Jesus' name, life, spirits that have caused them to be lifeless, spirits of death. Lord, I speak life over them. I loose life, your life, in the name of Jesus. Unresponsive, cold-hearted, has to go. Devoid of emotions, unmindful, you have to go. In the name of Jesus, frigidity, you have to leave. In the name of Jesus, hard heart, stony heart, unreceptive heart, go. callousness has to go. In Jesus' name, come out. Stagnant, you have to leave. Stagnant spirit. Lord, forgive me for worshiping uh, you and worshiping a false god. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. In Jesus' name, I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive me for spiritual adultery that's caused me to lose my spiritual clothes. Uh, in Jesus' name, the, de- the demons that hinder them from vitality. In Jesus' name, you have to go in the name of Jesus. Come out. Take a deep breath. Blow out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, all spirits of, that cause them to be intellectually weak or obtrusive, or st- stupid, to learning disabilities, I command you to go. Preoccupation, come out now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, all spirits of, of, that not being aware, not paying attention, Heedlessness, come out now in Jesus' name. Unobservant, in the name of Jesus. Oblivion, come out. Forgetfulness, come out. Fatigue, leave now in Jesus' name. Confusion, you have to go in the name of Jesus. Uh, Spirits that make us gloomy or troubled, come out. I command the fog, the mist over their lives to go. All dimness has to go. All darkness has to go. All weakness has to leave us all in the name of Jesus. All paralysis has to go in the name of Jesus. And spirits that cause them to be benumbed, go in Jesus' name. I break your power in the name of Jesus. And Lord, forgive me for being too busy uh, to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. And now, Lord, I ask you to clothe my nakedness. Lord, I ask you to clothe them with robes of righteousness. Lord, let your robes of righteousness fall from heaven. I pull them out of all those swallowed up places. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. Take a deep breath and blow out. In Jesus' name, praise you, Lord. Spirit of stupor, sleep, go now. In Jesus' name, I say, awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead that Christ might shine upon you. Every spirit of fear, doubt, unbelief, worry, anxiety, tension, stress, nervousness, pride, come out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of anger, wrath, bitterness, murder, whoredoms, harlotry, leave now in the name of Jesus. Every goat spirit has to go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I bless you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Will you feel a release? Lift your hands and sing with me. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you for this. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. Fill me with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Lord, I ask you to awaken them in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. And, Lord, we ask you to bless the food. Bless the hands that prepare the food. Thank you for the food. Lord, we ask you to bless it, purify it, and sanctify it. In Jesus' name, for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, God bless you. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.